Hello, hello again, friends and loyal Wolfpack members. Chaos Wolf here, and welcome back to the Elite Dangerous 1.5 beta server. Now it's that time again. It's ship review time, and this time we are going to be taking a look at this little. Well, I hesitate to say the word beauty, but it certainly is an interesting looking ship. This is the Asp Scout. Now I am a big fan of its uh, older older sister the uh, the asp explorer uh, but this one just kind of has me thrown a little bit sideways i'll be honest because uh, at the moment gone are the fins that were on the top of the ship and they have been moved and elongated and added to the side so I'm really not quite sure what kind of role they are meant to play, and I find them a little bit strange to look at. Um, I'm really not quite certain what to think of this at the moment. But uh, when we move around the back, we also see that it's not just the, uh, the fins that have been moved. Uh, those two protrusions at the top are no longer part of the engines, which they were in the... Uh, the Asp Explorer. The engines have actually been moved into the central mass of the ship, and they're one above the other now. Now, what these are either side, I'm really not sure. But uh, they're certainly not uh, used for manoeuvring. Now, how this thing goes about manoeuvring a bit more, I'm not quite sure, but uh, it doesn't seem like it's going to be able to yaw all that well, but that's just from what it's what the uh, what it looks like due to the engines. Now I'm not sure about the look of this ship, but uh, we can also see that they've moved the cockpit somewhat. It's actually been uh, moved further down, so that it protrudes further out the bottom of the ship. Now normally it did start further up. We actually had less space at the top. But, uh, now this is an interesting way of doing it, and I'm very curious to see how this works with um, with the ship and its hard points. But anyway, that's enough uh, gawking at the outside of the ship. Let's go and have a look in the cockpit, shall we? I mean, let's have a look around. It's nothing really special or surprising. It's pretty much the exact same cockpit. That we're used to in the uh, the Asp Explorer. It's pretty much just completely glass, apart from a little bit of flooring. So we have a really nice view out of this uh, cockpit, and we don't see the big, massive reverse thrusters that we used to have on the uh, the Explorer version of the ship. Uh, the reverse thrusters have actually been removed. So, again, I'm curious to see how this ship handles in comparison to its bigger sister. But, anyway, let's go and uh, have a look into the shipyard and have a look at this ship's stats. Here we go, and what I'm going to be doing is we are going to be comparing this to its big sister, the Asp Explorer. So, first of all, let's have a look at the top speed. Top speed is 223 meters per second. So that is 31 meters per second slower than the Asp Explorer. The top boost speed is 304 meters per second, which is 41 meters per second slower than the Asp Explorer. Uh, the maneuverability though is uh, eight out of 10, whereas the maneuverability here is six out of 10. So the maneuverability is up a good amount. Uh, the unladen jump range is 11.69 as opposed to the 13.12. So it's still going to have a good amount of jump range to it, but nowhere near as much as its uh, big assist of the Explorer counterpart. But even so, it is still not too bad. Shield 105, which is nowhere near... Well, it's uh, about 50% worse than... well. Let's say the Asp Explorer is 50% better than the Asp Scout. Armour, 324. 
as opposed to 378. So the uh, Asp Explorer is uh, more heavily armoured and has better shields. Hull mass, 150 tonnes and 280 tonnes. So the ship is nearly half the weight of the Asp Explorer. Uh, we also have... On the Asp Explorer, we have four utility mounts, two, uh, four small hard points, and two medium hard points. With the Asp Scout, we have two utility points, two small hard points, and two medium hard points. So we've lost two utilities and two hard point, uh, two small hard points. So this is a very cut down version of the Asp. Uh, we also have one class two internal, two class three, and two class four as opposed to the 2 class 2, 3 class 3, 1 class 5 and 1 class 6. So again, as we said, this is a big, big cut down on its original uh, chassis, really. So it is a very, very lightweight ship in comparison. It doesn't even have enough space internally uh, to be able to carry the same kind of materials or the same amount of cargo that its uh, bigger sister was able to. But anyway, that's enough looking at the stats here. Let's go into the outfitting department and see where everything is placed. Now, as you can see, we have some really nice groupings on the two lasers on the bottom. Uh, the medium hard points are also either side of the cockpit, so the uh, the grouping of these weapons is actually fairly good. We also have the two uh, the two utility mounts towards the rear of the ship, and that's pretty much it for the hard points. There isn't much to look at here. Now internally, uh, let's have a look at how much this would cost us. For military grade composites, that's going to be 3.5 million. The power plant, class descending, is going to be 1.6 again, so pretty much the same as the Cobra. Same with this one, so 1.6, that's going to be 1.6. This is going to be 150,000. This one is going to be 443,000. And sensors, 443,000. So this ship is not going to be that expensive to uh, to kit up and put together. As you can see, we start off with a class 3 shield generator. So the shields are... We are able to upgrade the shields fairly considerably. Uh, put them up to a class 4. But we're not going to do that now. We're going to leave that for the A-rated video. But... Uh, anyway, what we're going to go and do now is I am going to go and put in my standard sweep of uh, stock testing weapons and then we're going to go and jump outside and see how well this ship does in its manoeuvrability tests. Okay, so let's go and see how well this ship actually accelerates from a standing start. Now I don't know about you, but for a medium ship that is a very quick acceleration. So let's see how well this does decelerating. Now that was not bad at all. So anyway, let's go see how well this does in a boost start. So that was very, very quick to accelerate. And we do seem to cap out at around about 303 meters per second. So let's go and see how well this thing does in a turn. Wow, this thing really does pitch seriously quickly. And let's see how well this does in a boost turn. That wasn't bad at all, it did a 180 very, very quickly. But anyway, let's go and see how well this thing holds out in the hazardous resource extraction site. For some, some reason, I don't think we're going to do too well, but let's go and see how it does anyway. 
Okay, we seem to have found our first targets. It's a wing of a vulture and an adder. And it's really not hard keeping these guys in focus all this time. So let's go and see how well this does with uh, trying to keep these guys in line of fire the whole time. Yeah, what a surprise. So whilst he's got his chaff up, let's go and kill this guy. So that's that guy gone. Now I have just noticed we've nearly lost our shields already. So we're going to have to rely on our manoeuvrability now. So can we actually outmaneuver a vulture is the question. We seem to be doing a fairly good job of it at the moment. Let's not let him turn on us. That's what we do not want. So let's try and get our shields back up whilst we're dancing with him. Uh-oh. That was a bad idea. But he's thrown out his chaff again. But there we go. We're back on his tail. Now the shields on this ship are not the strongest. As we've kind of just seen. Whilst his chaff's up, again, let's stay out of his way and try and get our capacitor charged a little more. So now let's try and get his shields down. You know what, let's let him get away <laughs> out of that, because that was not fair. Let's see if we can get it. Now, his shield cell's gone off, but we should be able to get them down fairly quickly now. So now we've finally got his shields down, we can start working over his hull. And that's really weird, firing off all the weapons at once is not doing too badly on our weapon, uh, on our weapons capacity. So completely stuck, we are able to somewhat outmaneuver a vulture, and that is insane. And we only lost 26% of our hull. Well, let's get our shields back up. Well, this is going to be interesting. We've got ourselves a, f <laughs> a fully... Uh, yeah, he's fully healthy. Imperial Clipper. 
Now, I'm not looking forward to this, but let's give it a go anyway. And he's stuck in this stupid spinny thing, so let's let him get out of that. And then let's start firing on him anyway. We do not want you to be able to turn on us. So let's put some pips into our shields because they are seriously lacking. And now it doesn't matter anyway. I don't want you turning on me too much. You've already got your turrets on me. Yeah, that's not intimidating at all. Well, our shields are up at least. It's one good thing about having low uh, lower class shields, they recharge really fast. Come on, let's let you get out of this spin of death. Somehow I don't think we're going to get out of this one alive. Yep, yeah, I didn't think so. Okay, so yes, the combat was a little bit shorter than usual here, but uh, then again, it did learn that this ship does not like to go against uh, higher tier uh, clippers. But anyway, we have our landing pad. Let's go and see how well this thing docks. So we have landing pad three. There we are. And even though this ship is an extremely cut down version of the ASP, it still uses a medium landing pad. Which is not surprising, considering that it's pretty much the same hull. So, there we go. Not very hard to put down, but a little bit more easy if you do take your a little bit more time with it and align yourself properly. But anyway, let's get inside and see what I think about this ship. Okay, so what do I think about the ASP Scout? Uh, first of all, I think it has a really weird look to it from the front. Uh, only, pretty much only so much in that uh, I'm just so used to looking at the uh, the ASP Explorer, and this just looks so similar yet so different at the same time. It's just really strange. But uh, not only that, uh, it is a very, very manoeuvrable ship. I do like how manoeuvrable this thing is. It can give a vulture a run for its money. I somehow think that it's going to be still, still going to have uh, eagles run rings around it. But that's only if the uh, person flying the eagle knows what they're doing. But uh, it's, it is basically a poor man's asp explorer it is not as fast it is not as durable it is a hell of a lot more maneuverable uh, i do feel like this is going to be another one of those ships that's going to be vying to knock the cobra off the 
the king of the piracy um, <laughs> leaderboard at the moment. Uh, I do think it's going to be a fairly good pirate ship. I think it's going to be a very good low-level combat ship. And I do think it might be a very nice little cut price explorer ship. Uh, it's definitely not going to have the the jump range of its older sister. But it's certainly not going to be something to sneeze at. But uh, we'll have to go and have a look at how well it does once it has been fully upgraded. Because I do have the feeling that this ship is going to uh, benefit drastically from some uh, some serious upgrades. More so than other ships. But that's for the next A-rated video to go and have a look at. But anyway guys, I do hope you've enjoyed this video. And I do hope that it has given you a bit more of an insight into the ASP Scout. And helps you decide whether or not you want to go for this ship or not. If you have enjoyed the video, please do hit those like and subscribe buttons, because they really do help me out. And uh, remember, Commanders, I've been Commander Chaos Wolf, you've been Epic, I will see you next time, and until then, keep flying and stay shiny.